We were at the tip of the spear. Contact, this way. You want this? I was attached to Green Beret teams in Afghanistan. Ever since ancient times, soldiers have come back from war and, and turned their implements of war into implements to produce food, swords to plowshares. I used to ride gun on a Humvee, now I'm a farmer. I grew up in Boxford, Massachusetts. I'd spend a lot of time outdoors. Hiking in the mountains, backpacking, canoeing, kayaking. I've just always loved a little adventure. So in the late 90s, I decided to join the military. Afghanistan was kind of a, it was a crazy place. Here is uh, Afghanistan. This is uh, where I live. They launch rockets from over there. A lot of my job was interacting with the local population. He can't give us the phone number for this place. The majority of our work is to identify foreign intelligence and terrorist organizations working to harm our troops and stop them or exploit them. As a regular counterintelligence agent assigned to a Green Beret team, I got to do combat patrols, raids, being served by helicopter, foot patrols, mounted patrols. You see him, Pete? In a lot of ways, I felt like you were stepping back into biblical times and everybody's living in these mud huts, yet they could turn a cell phone into a bomb to blow up your home V. Over the 12 years I was in service, we did a lot of really complex things and they never turned out the way you want them to, or they didn't go the right way and people got hurt. I no longer believed in the fight. I no longer believed in the mission. Contact, this way! You right, Pete? When I got out of service, PTSD was very much affecting my family life in a, in a horribly negative way. And I had the choice to get help or, or lose my family. And so I managed to get help by uh, going to an uh, inpatient program for combat PTSD through the VA. And um, it was probably one of the best decisions I've ever made. And through that time in between, I realized that I was missing a lot of the shared experience and community that the veteran community brings to me. I used to work on highly classified missions. I was very tired of not being able to talk and show what I'd done. So one of the first decisions I made was, I'm not gonna do anything that I can't just, can't just tell a stranger about. So I started getting into gardening and it was ugly. <laughs> You know, it's a home gardener learning. You just plant everything all at once and then it turns into a great big mess and was able to grow a lot of stuff in a small space. And was finally one day able to share it to some veterans through the veteran hospital. I brought the box in and said, I don't know, could anybody use this box of vegetables? And the, uh, they disappeared, came back five minutes later and said it was all gone. It clicked the first time I gave away that box. Like that was the first time I truly felt good and purposeful since my time in service. And that's how Fields of Valor was born. In America, 1.2 million veterans are on federal food assistance. 27% of Iraq and Afghanistan vets struggle to put food on their tables, which is double the national average. I don't think our veterans deserve that. They've earned better. So we started with two 30-foot beds, and then the next year we had 10 30-foot beds. And all of a sudden we had seven-acre farm. In 2016, I founded a nonprofit. We called it Fields for Valor Farms. We grow a free farm share for veteran families in need. What that means is we sign up our families at the beginning of our season, and then every week we deliver them a, a bag of fresh vegetables and produce. It's all veterans here growing food for other veterans. Fields of Valor is supported by grants and individual donations. We find our veterans in need through other organizations already taking people off the streets or catching them on the way down into homelessness. One of the things that we appreciated about Pete is he is someone we can depend on. To commit to something on an ongoing basis, that takes real grit. 
takes more than a bed and a roof to really end someone's homelessness. And we are thankful for Pete. So when we moved from the small backyard property to the farm, we needed a caretaker and Antoinette needed a place to live. When I met Peter, I was actually getting evicted. I was in the Army for years. I deployed to Iraq. Then the transition back into the civilian world was just horrendous, and I didn't really have a path. I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. I think one of the biggest challenges veterans face is we've already had a career, and then we leave the service, and all of a sudden we have to start back from scratch and our skills don't often translate or we don't know how to translate them. It's a huge challenge for vets to ask for help. There's no way that I could sustain myself. We have been taught to be so self-sufficient. We have other veterans who come out here to learn, experience, and connect. They can feel in some additional purpose in helping out their fellow veteran. And the folks we serve also know that it's veterans growing at Fordham. We are currently serving 29 families. Uh, so every week um, we got about 60 laying hens in here. And so we end up getting about 30 dozen a week. Our veterans love the food that they get from Fields for Valor because not only does it provide them food, it provides them care and reminds them that they matter and they are not forgotten. The majority of our families are making less than 15,000 a year. And we expect to be providing about $1,500 worth of vegetables. And that, that's 10% of their budget that we've just given back to them. You know, when we give a bag of lettuce, that would be five bucks. In the supermarket, you can buy a lot of macaroni and cheese for five bucks, or a lot of potatoes, right? And you can fill up those bellies, but you're not getting the same amount of nutrition. They love beets, and they keep asking for more. And I, it's just the coolest thing to me that something so small, like a beet, can bring them joy you know, I'm not sure how many lives Pete has impacted with that little farm he has. We all want to be like Pete. The farm has been a huge help for me during my recovery. I honestly don't know if I would still be alive without it. I, I don't think it's just food. I think it's like the love and understanding and caring that, you know, we put in. The, the farm has given me a purpose, reason to get up in the morning something I'm proud to tell my family and feel good about. I think we'll know we can stop growing when there are no more hungry veterans. <laughs>